We are actually starting a brand new series. We had this last week. Uh, we started uh, the ability to produce wealth. Today is week two. And uh, if you missed out last Sunday, last week, I mean, we had Pastor Rico Rica Fort uh, who preached the message and he talked about uh, a charge to obey. Okay, if you don't know Pastor Rico, he used to serve as our senior pastor in Victory Ortigas, just about 10 minutes drive away from here. Uh, po sa may Robinson's Galleria. And uh, we just sent him out because uh, in a few weeks' time, he and his family will be flying to Panama to start a church planting work there. Okay, san po ba yung Panama? Uh, san ba yun? Sa may Central America. Yan, makikita nyo sa mapa yan. So every time you remember Pastor Rico, do pray for him because uh, this is going to be an exciting work in that part of uh, Central America. Okay, siguro parang kapatid na rin ng mga Pilipino, no? Kasi Spanish-speaking to eh. Yung mga Yosoy, di ba? Yosoy Espanyol, Yosoy Pilipino. Alam ni Matt yan, ano? Kasi may Spanish course kami dati. Next. Yun lang, nang, yun lang nga natatandaan ko sa dalawang semesters, no? <laughs> so, yan. So, today, we'll talk about this brand new series. And again, our goal, our heart, and really our prayer is to be reminded and, and remember that we have a God who is a covenant-keeping God. And this covenant-keeping God intends to bless each one of us. Tingnan mo yung katabi mo, kumukhang blessed ba yan? Kumukhang busog na busog ba ngayon yan? Yan, malusog, di ba? Gusto ni Lord, i-bless ka niya, pero hindi mag-e-end sa'yo yun. God desires to bless us so that we can be a blessing to many. As in, gamitin ka ni Lord para maging pagpapala ka. Sino sa inyo, prayer mo yun? Okay. Dalawa, tatlo, apat. Apat lang ang gusto rito sa on-site. Kayo online. <laughs> we all want to be blessed, right? But obviously, we wouldn't want it to end with us. We want to be a channel of His blessing. And maybe ang question mo siguro, no? Anong connection nito sa panahon natin? Ang daming negative feeds sa social media accounts natin. How does this, uh, kumbaga, how does this apply in our life today? We all know just recently, the news came out, and last April, the April report, we had over 4 million Pilipi uh, Filipinos who went jobless. Uh, well, kasama na siguro dun yung impact nung ECQ, no? So maraming nawala ng trabaho. Uh, businesses are either slowing down or have slowed down, or maybe some businesses have downsized its company, and uh, some have even closed down altogether. And then, of course, the rollout of vaccine is quite slow every day. When I look at my Twitter feed, uh, may pinafollow kasi akong isang, uh, kumbaga, nag-update siya lagi ng vaccination. I think the Philippines, uh, at least with our population of close to 110 million people, only less than 5% have been fully vaccinated. Okay, so malayo pa talaga. Ang daming mga hindi magagandang pangyayari in the national scope. So how does this apply in our life? You see, we're going to talk about uh, one chapter in the book of uh, Deuteronomy. And uh, in that one chapter, ang gusto nating madiscover dito is to study this truth, this, this word, embrace its power and promise that's contained from the scripture. And ang pinaka-importante, we would be able to apply it, okay? And uh, be able to understand why God wants to prosper each one of us. Why did He give us this ability to produce wealth. How does this connect? Okay? Ano bang significance nitong truth na to sa buhay natin ngayon bilang anak ng Diyos? Okay? And how does Deuteronomy 8 make sense in light of what we're all going through today? Now, if you have your Bibles, I'm encouraging you to open it to Deuteronomy chapter 8. We're gonna look at several verses there beginning in verse 2. Okay? So chapter 8, verse 2 to 4. And then we'll jump to 14 to 16. Right, so I'm going to be reading from the ESV. It says, You shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that He might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep His commandments or not. And He humbled you, and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread 
alone, para sa mga Pilipino, by Pandesal alone, di ba? O kaya Pande Manila, yun, yung mga natin ngayon. But man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothing did not wear out on you, and your foot did not swell these 40 years. Verse 14. Then your heart be lifted up, and you forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrifying wilderness with its fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty ground, where there was no water, who brought you water out of the flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna that your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and test you to do good, to do you good in the end. This is the word of the Lord. Let's all bow our heads and let's pray. Father, thank you for being the covenant keeping God that you are. And as we study God's word today, I pray, God, that whatever mindset that is unbiblical, you will start breaking it. You will start destroying it. And you allow the truth of your word to transform us inside and out that we may live and apply your truth in our daily life. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Now, may kwento ako, no? When I was in grade school, particularly grades 4 to 6, I had this habit of writing uh, my assignment on my left hand. Okay? So, medyo weird, no? Pero nung mga uh, 8, 9, 10 years old ako, sinusulat ko yan sa kamay ko. Hindi ko rin maalala kung bakit. Uh, and usually, whenever I would go home, naglalakad kami ng mga kapatid ko pa uh, we live in Manila, um, I would end up, minsan napapagalitan ako ng mom ko kasi pag umuwi ako, madumi yung uniforme ko. So, dati hindi pa uso yung mga, alam mo yung pinapatuyo mo yung kamay mo sa CR, walang ganun sa school namin eh, no? So, kapag basa kamay, walang tissue, alam mo yun, yung bata ka, pahit-pahit ka lang sa uniforme. So, uwi ako ng bahay, madumi lagi yung uniforme ko, napapagalitan ako, no? And uh, I think in, in our time, it's kind of weird if you're gonna put something on your hand, right? To, meron ba sa inyo may ganun ka, yung parang, Habit mo lang, meron bang, o oh, ako lang, ako lang yata yung weird dito, no? <laughs> nung bata. No? Pero ngayon, hindi mo siguro gagawin yun kasi usong-uso yung mga post-it notes ngayon. Sino sa inyo gumagamit ka ng post-it notes? Okay, di ba sa desk mo, minsan sa uh, ding-ding nung, ano mo, nung work from home setup mo. And of course, kung medyo saucy ka at saka naka-laptop ka na, hindi mo na kailangan yun kasi may... Uh, an- mga online post-it na, di ba? Yung downloadable, no? Tapos lahat ng kailangan mong gawin, yung isang daang gagawin mo sa 14 hours na trabaho mo, nandun lahat, talagay mo lahat yan, di ba? So, it's all there. Uh, it's a, what we call a sticky note. And when you look at the book of Deuteronomy, para tong sticky note ni God, okay, sa Israel. Para siyang ganun, no? Why? Ano bang purpose ng post-it note or sticky note? It's to remind us. Now, reality is, some of us, makalimutin. Meron ba sa inyo makalimutin ka? Di ba? Yung, uh, sinamit mo yung susi ng kotse, tapos after five minutes, hinahanap mo. Nako, naiwan ko sa loob ng kotse. Di ba? Yung, nakalimutan mo, sinabit mo lang pala. Di ba? So, minsan may ganun, ano? And that's the purpose of sticky note. Now, you look at the Bible today. Bakit sticky note? Because this book of the Bible, particularly in Deuteronomy, serves as God's reminder to the children of Israel as they were about to enter the promised land. Pa- malapit na sila, papasok na sila. And we're talking about the second generation of Israelites. Bakit? Ano ba nangyari? Because God had to warn these children of Israel, the second generation, of the disobedient acts and uh, yung mga bagay na ginawa na rebellion nung first generation. Sino ba yung first? These were the Israelites who left Egypt after becoming slaves for many, many years. Now, pag binasa natin yung first five books of the Bible, sino sa inyo alam niyo yung first five books ng Bible sa Old Testament? Meron bang nakakaalam? Okay, di ba? First five books, di ba? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Ah, yung iba kala niya. And then, 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 di ba? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Ayan, yung first five books. And the Jews would call it Torah or the Pentateuch. And the first five books, basically, when you look at the book of Exodus, it talks about uh, the Israelites that left Egypt 
after being slaves for over 400 years. Now we all know when we read the book of Exodus, um, God led them out of outstretched hand because when they were trapped, okay, pagdating nila sa isang portion, uh, Red Sea yung kaharap nila, God divided the Red Sea and they were able to cross the land safely. And after that, God provided manna, ito binabasa natin kanina uh, sa Bible, uh, a kind of food that God would send them every day. God would provide water from them for them from the rock. Uh, and uh, if you notice, nung binasa rin natin, their clothing did not wear out and their sandals did not wear out as well. Talo pa yung islander, di ba? Saka, di ba, may walang tibay na maaasahan. Ano ba yung commercial na gano'n? Naalala ko may gano'ng commercial dati sa sleepers, no? But again, uh, the Bible says in Deuteronomy 1 verse 2, it would only take 11 days for them to reach the promised land from Mount Sinai to Kadesh Barnea. The problem was, bakit 40 years? Bakit from 11 days, umabot ng 40 years? Ang tagal nun, ha? Sobrang laki ng diprensya nun uh, ng pag-ano nila, pag nila. Well, we have to remember, when they were in the wilderness, the Israelites agreed to a special agreement or a covenant with God. God gave them a set of laws and commands that uh, He would tell them to obey, and as they obey it, God would bring them eventually to the promised land. And that's part of the covenant God made with Abraham when we go back to Genesis chapter 12. Now, we would notice, and we would read it from the Old Testament, the people of Israel violated God's laws again and again. Okay? Sino sa inyo naalala nyo yun, nung bata kayo? Yung may sabi ni mami mo, Anak, wag mong ilalagay ang daliri mo sa bintilador. Okay, so kung ano yung sinabi sa'yo, yun yung ginawa mo. Ayun, naputulang ka ng kuko. <laughs> Ganon. Naalala ko yung anak ko, nung panganay, when she was about a, a year and a half, si Bea, sabi ko sa kanya, anak, kasi siyempre yung mga ganong edad, mahilig mang gaya, no? mga toddlers. So nakita niya, pagka nauhaw kami, o kaya magtitimpla kaming kape, nilalagay namin yung cup namin or yung mug namin sa hot water. So iniisip niya siguro, sa edad niya, one and a half years, ah, pag nauhaw ako, lalagay ko lang yung baso ko. So, eh siyempre, maliit ang kamay, malaki yung baso, nailagay niya yung kamay niya dun sa hot water, tapos napaso siya. Siyempre, iyak siyang ganun. Tapos sabi ko, anak, sabi ko sa kanya, anak, the reason why I told you not to put your hand there, because it's hot. So every time she sees the red, kasi red ang color nung, nung ano, no, yung parang dispenser, tuturo niya lang lagi, hot, hot, no, gaganun siya. So naalala na niya, <laughs> naalala na niya, ba't ba tayo napunta dun? Basta ganun, naalala niya. Pero ang problema, yung mga Israelites, araw-araw, pinapaalala ni Moses, araw-araw, they have the commandments that God gave them, yet they would continue to violate it. Now, here's Numbers 14, verses 26 to 32. This sums up the tragic judgment the older generation experienced. Okay? Verse 26 says, The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, How long will this wicked community grumble against me? I have heard the complaints of these grumbling Israelites. Tell them, as surely as I live, declares the Lord, I will do to you the very thing I heard you say. In this wilderness, your bodies will fall. Every one of you, 20 years old or more, who was counted in the census and was grumbled against me. Not one of you will enter the land I swore with uplifted hand to make your home except Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, son of Nun. As for your children that you said would be taken as plunder, I will bring them into the, to enjoy the land you have rejected. But as for you, your bodies will fall in its wilderness. Your children will be shepherds here for 40 years, suffering for your unfaithfulness until the last of your bodies lie in the wilderness. This was a tragic ending to the original batch of Israelites that left uh, Egypt. They would have reached the promised land in a matter of 11 days, but they all, the older generation, died one by one in the wilderness because they refused to obey and they refused to trust God. And yet, 
what happened was, the younger generation, yung mga anak nila, yun ang papasok ng promised land. And so they were in the brink of entering the promised land, pero bago sila pumasok doon, Moses had to restate God's commands originally given to the older generation to remind them, to warn them, to teach them the valuable lessons that they should have learned from their forefather. Two lessons we can mine from Deuteronomy chapter 8. Okay, ito yung babasahin natin, ito yung pag-aaralan natin. What do we need to remember from Merce, uh, Moses' sermon here? Una, the first lesson, God reminds us to depend on Him completely. Okay? God reminds us to depend on Him completely. Verses 2 and 3 says, You shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that He might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart. Even though they grumbled, even though this, they disobeyed God, the Lord would time and time again provide for them their daily needs, diba? feeding them with manna, providing them water from the rock, um, making sure that they, 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 their clothing will not wear out or their sandals. Now, sino sa inyo, ladies, fashionista ka? Okay, yung kahit pandemic, di ba, sa bahay ka lang, nagpo-porma-porma ka, di ba, kahit papano. Lalo na last year, di ba, wala halos lumalabas. Pero, nang hinayang ka sa binili mo, di ba, bumili ka dyan, nag-shopping ka pa naman, tapos biglang nag-ECQ last year, hindi mo na masuot. So, kahit papano, fashion-fashion ka. Pero, you look at 40 years, di ba, the younger generation. Imagine, ako lang, no, when I was reading this again, ini-imagine ko lang ko fashionista ka, tapos lumapit ka sa asawa mo, honey, bili mo naman ako ng damit, yung gawa sa camel skin. Di ba? Nasabihin ng asawa mo sa'yo, honey, you don't need, you don't need to change your fashion because your clothing remains the same and it's still beautiful. Di ba? Hindi siya nag-wear out yung sandals mo bagong-bago pa rin ang itsura kahit na apat na pong taon na tayo <laughs> sa disyerto, no? Parang, ang, parang yun lang naman imahinasyon ko, no? But, Seriously, what is God trying to teach the Israelites during these times? Na ma-apply natin sa buhay natin. It is to be totally dependent on God. Totally dependent on Him involves humility and faith. Mahirap yun, ha? Kung nasa disyerto ka, di ba? Mainit, wala namang tanim dun, wala ka namang makakain dun, na matino, probably snakes lang, in scorpion, sabi nga doon sa Bible. But then again, you look at the manna and the quail that God provided for them, it represented God's faithfulness, God's provision over their life. And all He wanted to see was for the Israelites to trust Him completely. Imagine, ano, sabi ni Lord sa kanila, di ba? You go out of your tent every day and get the manna that you need for that day. Huwag kang kukuha ng sobra. Now, sino sa inyo, pag nag ka, lalo na pre-pandemic, di ba lahat kinukuha mo, yung mga hindi mo kinakain usually sa bahay, kukunin mo lahat yun, di ba? Tapos minsan, sobra-sobra tuloy yung plato mo. But God would tell them, huwag kang kukuha ng sobra. Alam mo kung bakit? Kasi bukas meron uli. Ako ang magpo-provide. You can trust me for that. And I believe God is uh, saying the same message to some of us here, Yes, you might think, what will happen tomorrow? It's still pandemic. There is so much uncertainty. God will provide. You may not know this, but God has provided in advance. God has prepared it in advance. But all we need to do is depend on Him. Looking at the Israelites' wilderness journey, three basic life lessons that the Lord addressed and met during this time. Ano ba yung mga questions? What shall we eat? What shall we drink? And what shall we wear? Interesting and very familiar, okay? It sounds very familiar because these were the questions Jesus addressed in Matthew chapter 6. You look at verse 31. In the Amplified Translation, it says, Therefore, do not worry. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, do not worry. Yan, okay? Do not worry or be anxious. Perpetually uneasy Distracted. Alam mo yung perpetual. Di ba yung lagi na lang? Paulit-ulit. Okay? What are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? What are we going to wear? Honestly, these are major concerns in our time of pandemic. And last year, you probably asked that same question. Pare-pareho tayong 
nasa, kumbaga, we're in the same boat last year when the pandemic hit us. When will this end? When will our kids be able to go out again? Of course, ngayon, pwede na lumabas ng five and up, di ba? Pero sa open area lang. But it's a big question mark for all of us last year because we don't know what will happen the next day. Verse 32, For the pagan Gentiles eagerly seek all these things, but do not worry. Why? For your heavenly Father knows that you need them. Okay? Your heavenly Father knows what you need tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, 10 years from now. Even your children's children, God knows them. God knows what your children's children will need. Verse 33, But first and most importantly, seek Aim at, strive after His kingdom and His righteousness. His way of doing and being right, the attitude and character of God, and all these things will be given to you also. Take note, all. Not some, not a few, not some groups of people. Hindi, all. Okay? We may be encountering a degree of difficulty at this point of the pandemic. We might be going through some serious financial crunch, right? I mean, for some parents, enrollment time sometimes can, can give you stress, right? Diba, syempre, lalo na kung malaki ang pamilya mo, marami kang papaaralin, magbabayad ka, marami kang aasikasuhin. Your family may be facing some serious health issues. Ang challenge dito, kung ikaw pa ang breadwinner, lahat nakaasa sa'yo, lahat nakatingin sa'yo. Kung may concern, ikaw ang laging lalapitan. And that can be uh, very difficult and very burdensome if we're in that situation. But what is God telling us in all this? God reminds us to depend on Him completely. Now think about this. God commanded uh, the Israelites to go out in the morning to collect. Diba nabanggit ko kanina? Bakit? Sakto. Ang i-collect mo, wag sobra. Kasi nga, He will provide it. Every day, the Lord will provide it. What uh, is God trying to remind us about this? Where can we get that reminder? It's in verse 3. Look at the last part of verse 3 of chapter 8. That He might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. You see, it's not our provision, it's not our business, it's not our salary or the promotion that you are praying for that would give you security in life. It is God alone who can provide for each one of us. And the one that can sustain us through this pandemic is God's Word. It is the Word of God. Every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. The question here. Okay, and even if you're online watching, how much word of God is in you today? How much word of God is in you today? Do you have time daily to read God's word? When you read God's word, do you skim on it? Do you skip? Or do you take time? Do you meditate on it? Do you chew it? Mas mahaba ba yung time sa Netflix kaysa sa Word of God? There's no problem if you watch Netflix, gusto mo mag-relax. But it's the Word of God that would sustain us throughout these challenging times and throughout our lifetime. How we respond, you see, how we respond to the test of life reveals what's really in our hearts, especially when those tests involves uh, the everyday experience of life. You see, sa atin, no, mga Pilipino, kung sa mga Pilipino, no, uh, pandesal is life, kanin is life. Sino sa inyo, hirap kang kumain pag walang kanin. Okay. Extra rice pa, di ba? Pero, para sa isang Kristiyano, the Word of God is life. Wala nang iba. Okay? Well, you look back at the Israelites, they get hungry. They get thirsty. There are concerns that they, they would meet and they would, they would uh, encounter during their time in the wilderness, but they grumbled and they became critical. Now, the late American Christian Bible teacher, Warren Worsby, he made this comment 
when we go through tests or trials. Ito sabi niya, the devil tempts us to bring out the worst in us. Okay? The devil tempts us to bring out the worst in us, but the Father tests us to bring out the best in us. Sa managagaling yung best when we learn to trust Him fully. When we don't see clearly what is ahead of us, trust the Heavenly Father because the provision is already there. We just have to trust Him. The devil wants us to complain. The devil wants us to blame people, blame our parents for where we are today. The devil wants us to blame the government, to blame everyone else, including himself. But you know what the intention of God? is to build our character, to build our faith in Him. James 1 verse 2 to 4, it says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. In the NIV, it says perseverance. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking Nothing. You know what the intention of God when there are difficulties? is to build our faith. And so, sabi ni Paul dito, ah, ni James dito, consider it pure joy. It may not seem to make sense. Why will I be joyful in the midst of difficulty, in the midst of pandemic? San manggagaling yun? San kuhuhugutin yun? When the Word of God is in you, and when you know that God promised something, you can hold on to it because He is dependable. Because he can be relied upon. You see, ako, my wife and I, we have kids, three kids. And as they grow, of course, the demands grow as well. If you're a parent, you all know that. Pag may anak ka, the demands grow. And there may be times that we are hard-pressed. But this is what God has reminded us again and again. Will we trust him or will we wallow in self-pity? Kawawa namang kami. Kakaawa naman ang sitwasyon namin. Will we wallow in self-pity or will we trust His timeless truth? Will we depend on God completely? Question is, will we let these tests make us better in life or bitter in life? It's, all a, ma- it's, it's a perspective now. It's a mindset that God wants to change in us. Will we be better as we face these tests, or will we be bitter? What does God want us to remember? God reminds us to depend on Him completely. Second lesson, verses 14 to 16, it says, Then your heart be lifted up, and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the desert, and terrifying wilderness with its fiery serpents and scorpions, thirsty ground where there is no water, who brought you water out of the flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna that your fathers did not know that he might humble you and test you to do you good in the end. Second lesson, God reminds us he's the source of every provision. He's the source of every provision. The provisions of manna Water from the rock, clothing, sandals that did not wear out. They clearly show to us God is the ultimate provider of the Israelites. Just take note of this. Walang convenience store sa desert. Okay? Walang water refilling station. Si Daniel, nakita ko may water refilling station sila na business. Walang water refilling station dun. Disyerto yun. Walang mall para magpalamig ka. Okay? But then again, you look at all those concerns they have, God provided during their 40-year journey in the desert. The Lord demonstrated to them His power by provide, providing the basic necessities as they were growing in their journey with God. More importantly, the Lord reminded them, even though nandun yung presence ng serpent, ng scorpions, God was there to protect them. God was there to keep them safe. From harm. When you look at verses 14 to 16, the Lord also warned the Israelites of a potential pitfall. Ano ba yun? Nakapag nag-prosper ka na, guminhawa na buhay mo dahil nakatira ka na sa promised land, do not forget. 
Who gave this to you? Sino ba ang nagbigay nung ginhawa? Sino ba ang nag-promote sa'yo? Sino ba ang nag-bless sa'yo? Huwag mong kalilimutan sa akin galing yun. Yun ang parang point ni God. You look at verses 15 and 16, led you, brought you, fed you. They were all verbs, action words. Who did all these? It's not them. It's God. God led them. God brought them. God fed them. God Himself, God alone, can bring this provision to each one of us. And as you prosper, okay, I've known some people, I've talked to some of them, they got promoted even during this time of pandemic. Their business is thriving during this pandemic. And this is a great reminder for us. It's not merely your talent. It's not merely your know-how or your experience or breaks of the game na sinasabi nila, swerte ka mo. Hindi eh. God alone will bring you. Why? Because God is reminding us that He is the source of every provision. In reality, when everything becomes smooth, di ba? when everything is beautiful and, and, and uh, parang walang bumps, dinadiretso lang, napopromote ka lang, Na promote ka 10 times ngayong taon sa unang anim na buwan. Grabe, di ba? Significant, di ba? Yung grabbing breakthrough yun, ano? Uh, ang gusto lang paalanan ni God sa atin, not to forget that He is the source. Forgetting God, the ultimate source of our provision, will only make us proud. That is why God had to remind them way ahead. Don't forget me. This is something your fathers forgot when... I brought them out of Egypt. They started to grumble. God reminds us, He is the source of every provision. Now, we are 16 months into this pandemic, and uh, as I close, ano, I want you to examine your life today. Maybe it's good to ask yourself, okay? do you feel like you're on this extreme side where you are hemmed in on every side. Parang walang ending yung, uh, yung, yung, ano, yung concerns sa bahay, sa family, sa personal walk mo with God, maybe sa business mo, maybe it's in your company, and parang hindi ka na maka-catch up sa dami ng concerns. No? Seemingly, the future parang bleak. And then, we're like nine, ten months to, to go, before the next national election, and you look at the initial roster, parang napapailing ka, oh no. Pag ito tumakbo, oh no. Parang ganun ka na lang. But on the other hand, maaring ikaw naman yung nasa group, nasa group na to. Ang ganda na nangyayari sa'yo kahit pandemic. Fully vaccinated ka na, may vaccination card ka na, ganda ng takbo ng business mo, maaring na-promote ka, salary increase. You might be in these two extremes, but God is reminding us that He's the source of every provision. You see, God sees you, God understands you, and God knows every concern you have. God sees everything you have. But then again, two lessons. Gustong paalala ni God sa atin as I close. And we're going to worship the Lord. But here it is. God reminds us to depend on Him completely. God reminds us He is the source of every provision. Remember these two lessons because God sees you, God knows you, and God understands your situation. I want to invite you to stand today. You could bow your heads with me. And if you're watching online, if you're with someone, wherever you're watching this service today, you could bow your heads with me as well. We're going to take time to worship the Lord. You could bow your heads, close your eyes, and allow the Lord to speak to you today. You know exactly, God knows exactly what you are going through. But God is with you. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe it's a time for you to just Come to, the, come to the Lord in humility and say, God, 
you have spoken to me. Maybe you have not been prioritizing God's Word because this pandemic has, has been taking its toll on you. Now is the time to say, God, I want to recommit my life to reading God's Word, meditating on it, most importantly, living it out, applying it in our life. Maybe you're here today. You've been following Christ, but somehow your eyes have started to veer away from Him. And now, mas nakafocus ka sa ginagawa mo. It's, it's time to go back to the center of everything. It's Christ. The unshakable God, the King of Kings. The one who rules. Let me pray for you today. Father, thank you. Thank you for your message. You're a covenant-keeping God. You're a God who desires to fulfill every good and precious promise for your children. Lord, for some of us, as you speak to us, Lord, we repent. For how many times during this time of pandemic, when we would think that with the ability we have, with the experience we have, with the know-how, we could get past this pandemic. Yet, at the expense of our relationship with you, at the expense of our time with you, God, we ask that you forgive us. Forgive us for the time that we've neglected our time with you. Help us, God, to go back to the center of everything. That's Jesus. The reason why we're here is because of you. Lord, I pray, beginning today, we would develop a habit of not just reading the Scripture, but we will meditate on it. And we would do carefully what your Word says. Not by our own strength, but by the power that comes from the Holy Spirit. We thank you for your faithfulness. As we come into a time of worship, we want more of you. We just want more of you. Fill us today. Fill us today. And change us from inside and out.